So we go back to our objectives, and that is to uh, study uh, another example that uh, is a little bit more complex than the first initial one that we took before. So we will look at uh, a shaft system that has uh, two pulleys, and uh, each one is, uh, has a moment on it uh, that is acting on a different plane. So the example is going to uh, basically uh, look like this. I'm going to just kind of give you a drawing, and then we'll go through the uh, process of finding reactions, uh, shear forces, and also then the bending moments in the, on different planes. So it will look uh, something like that where we have a, uh, a shaft, so the basic shaft is like this, and then the shaft uh, has uh, one pulley, and then continues on, has another pulley, and continues on, and then it will have bearings. So if we choose a pulley, so we have uh, some kind of a, a pulley system here, and then another one that has a different diameter on this end and uh, then it is supported, simply supported at bearing so we, this is a symbol for bearings uh, in this case and um, then if I look at uh, the four system on this I have a uh, belt and the belt here has 200 uh, pounds and then 1000 pounds on the other side Obviously, the 1,000 is bigger than 200, so the, there's a rotation uh, associated with that. And uh, this is counteracted by another moment uh, carried by two belts. One belt here is at 500, and then the other one has a force of 100 pounds. And um, the distances are 10 inches here, 10 inches here, 10 inches here. And... Um, uh, we wanted to describe the reactions uh, on the, this is point A and this is point B so we want to find the reactions here, the reactions here and then build the moment diagrams uh, from these uh, reactions so if we look um, next now at the real a uh, little bit uh, cleaner uh, description this is our shaft system and these are the two pulleys that are acting on it and um, we have now the, these, uh, this pulley here the net force is 1200 pounds going horizontal and this pulley here the net force is 600 pounds going vertical uh, and then associated with the, with the 1200 uh, pound force is a net uh, moment which is uh, 200 times this distance plus 1000 times this distance and that gives us 1600 pound force inch and similarly we have uh, a net moment here that is uh, 1600 pound force in the counter direction so if you look at now the situation of horizontal force, vertical force, a uh, moment about the x-axis, another moment about the x-axis. So we better really uh, consider a three-dimensional system, Cartesian system, or the x-axis along the shaft, the y-axis is vertical, the z-axis is horizontal, and then we would have two planes, one plane uh, looking at the x-y plane, which is the axis here, x, and this is the y, and in this case, uh, we would have on the XY plane, we have the force 600 pounds is the only force that's in this system. And it's reacted at A and D. Uh, on the other hand, if I look at the XZ plane, this is X and then Z is going down, uh, which is looking at the top from the, on this plane. This is X and this is a Z. Uh, then the uh, only force is a concentrated 1200 and then we have reactions at A and D. From simple uh, moment equilibrium, take the moment about A, take the moment about D, and equate to zero, then you will find the two reactions here to be 200 and 400, and these are two reactions are both in the Y direction, so these are vertical reactions. Uh, similarly, we could uh, take the moment about A and the moment about D, uh, and uh, in this case the moment is with the 1200 pounds 
because it's in a different plane, so it gives you like a different direction for the moment. Um, the moment of the 1200 pounds is rotating about the y axis, so it's an my type moment, while the moment of the 600 pounds is um, rotating uh, about the z axis, so this is an mz type moment. So they're on two different planes completely, or two different directions rather. So uh, in this case, again, finding the, for the reactions, I have 800 pound force and 400 pound force. And from the reactions now, it's very easy to construct the moment diagram because I can take the moment of the 200 uh, pounds about C, that will be the maximum moment, which gives me 4,000. And uh, the distribution of moment is a straight line and then it has to go down to zero because of simple support. Note that I totally ignored the shear force diagram because I don't need it right now, I just need the moments themselves. So I just did the job by taking the, the moments 200 times x, where x is this uh, direction, x is this distance, then the maximum value will be at uh, exactly under the load. Same thing here, the maximum value will be under the load. So we have two different moment diagrams that um, we could use. And uh, therefore, uh, we can add the moments as vectors. Because remember, uh, if the, 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 these are the two diagrams. If I take a cross section of the beam, for example, at uh, what I would imagine the worst point, or one of the worst points would be point uh, B, at point B, I don't have the maximum uh, MZ moment, but I have 2,000. And while at uh, point B, I have the maximum MY moment, which is 8,000. So I have MZ equals 2,000, MY equals 8,000. So MY is 8,000, MZ is uh, 2,000, and this is a circular cross section of the beam. And therefore, in the moment you treat it as a vector. And that's why we put two arrows to indicate the direction of the moments as a vector, to distinguish that from a normal for, for more force, for example. So with these two moments, you take the vectorial sum, and the vectorial sum used by Pythagorean theorem to get the diagonal, and the diagonal is the square root of the squares of the two moments, and it gives me 8,246 uh, 8, uh, pound force, and the inclination angle beta is equal to uh, 76 uh, degrees. And this uh, basically completes the analysis that we have now uh, complete uh, uh, determination of the distribution of moments along the beam. And note now that I have two different vectors for the moment. One uh, going uh, into the y direction, that's my, and the other one going into the z, z direction, which is uh, the m sub z, and then when we do the stress analysis, we have to do the uh, the stress due to m y and the stress due to m z, as we will see a little bit later uh, in this uh, chapter. And that really completes an example on uh, using the free body diagrams to describe the distribution of moments. Um, in the next section, we will talk about uh, a little bit more systematic way using what's called the singularity functions to describe